This is what I'm currently working on in my studio. I always piece with uh, in the quilting menu, regardless of which machine I'm on, Q-01. My favorite pins to use when I'm piecing are these. These are called magic pins. And these are the silk ones, they're really fine. And the reason I like to use these when I'm piecing, I can just sew over them and it doesn't damage the need, my needle on the machine or anything, which makes us really keeps them nice and accurate that way. But you'll see how I use this here in just a second, because the first thing I have got to do is lay this out. I got all my pieces cut. So I'm hoping to come close to finishing this quilt top today. I've got about five more rounds all the way around it to go get. So next is this color right here, this white. It's, it's actually got a really cool design in it. There's stars and sunbursts and these swallow birds. It's pretty cool looking. There we go. And it is going to go, I'm gonna move this out of my way. And the coffee has got to go way over here for now. There we go, okay. So, this is the next edge right here. There we go. Okay. This first strip goes along this bottom piece right here, let's see here. Here we go, right through here. I've already got all of my strips pre-cut to size. And they are ready to sew on. And I can tell you it's a very stunning quilt. I'm probably going to quilt it with, um, I'm gonna quilt it with white thread is what I'm thinking. I mean, it's like either white or black and black would just be too dark. Um, and I think the white would be easier on my eyes to see. One thing I'm discovering when I'm quilting in the long arm, when I'm free motion quilting, that's how I quilt most of my quilts. I free motion quilt them. That's what I, that's what I love to do. So I'm gonna use um, a white quilting thread because it'll just show up, I think it'll really show up nicely on this quilt and this has a lot of bright white fabric in it. So it's really, and you can see it, oh good, you can see here, there's a swallow right there on the black. And it's just really beautiful. I love this fabric. So here we go, there we go. I think that will work much better for this. Okay. So, and now I am just going, I'm not stretching the fabric as I'm pinning, I'm just lining up the raw edges and pinning about every four to six inches. So now I am going to just stitch this down. I have white uh, Madeira, thread in my machine and it's same thread in the bobbin. I'm just going to piece it all down and turn on my seam guide, my projector, my laser light seam guide doohickey. And we're going to get started. Now I'm not going to be removing any pins. I'll let them just sew right over the top of them. Okay, that one's all sewn down. And now I'm going to show you something else that I truly, truly love. And that's these zircle magnets right here. See how all the, when you drop it, watch what happens. It just automatically, the magnet somehow pushes it right out to the edge. There's the one I just dropped right there. Pretty cool. I'm going to lay it there. And as I take these pins out, I'm going to drop them down onto the magnet pin cushion. And there they go. Every time like clockwork, they are so handy. Oh my goodness. So easy to do. 
I consider if you do a lot of pinning, these are really a must have. You really want one of these in your arsenal of tools because it just makes life, it just pinning goes so much quicker when you have the proper tools to use. It's, it's just easy to grab one, drop it back on and check it out. They're not gonna fall off. Pretty cool. Okay. So I'm gonna go over to the ironing board and press this seam. You can see on the back how I have all of my seams going out towards the edge of the quilt. So I'm just gonna, first I'm gonna press it on top and set the seam and then I'm gonna fold it over like so and press that. And when you're pressing seams, you want to press, when you're pressing the seam to one side, you wanna press from the top of your quilt top. If you press from the back, you might get a little fold of fabric pressed in right on that seam and that's a way to prevent that. So we're gonna go over to the ironing board. I'm gonna put the other white logs. So when you make a log cabin quilt, these strips are referred to as logs. This on this one, because there's two different size strips, the center will be will not be in the center of the quilt. And that's this, this piece right here. This is the center of the quilt. This is the starting point of the quilt. Is this, oops, there we go, <laughs> is this rectangle right here. <clears throat> so we'll turn it around. There we go. Okay. I'm going to get my strip. And when you get to these longer strips, you have to piece the strips together. So there you can see where I join two strips right there. And then when I join strips, whether it's for a quilt like this or borders <clears throat> or a binding, I always press my seam open nice and flat reduces bulk. Okay. Now I'll get started pinning again. Yep. And now we can sew this, this strip down. Now let's get our pins taken out. Another great thing about the silk pins, if you happen to stick yourself, it doesn't hurt nearly as bad with one of a, with a larger pin than a, like a larger pin does. Okay, I'm gonna run over to the ironing board and give this one a press. Got to do earlier was trim my dog ears where I had joined. So see how that has that little dog ear right there from where I did the the miter splice. So I'm just going to trim that even with the edge of my fabric. There we go. Right like this. Okay. I thought I had another one somewhere. Let me look at the back of this real quick. Otherwise, I'll forget. And then when I go to quilt it in the frame, <laughs> sometimes, it, especially on the white fabric, it can peek through with the shadow. I guess that's the only one, right? Everything else twinned, I think. Yes. Okay. So next, I get to add a colorful one, one of the prints. It goes down the left side first. Okay. So. But some of these have the strips have a little bit of piecing because you're insetting this white and black stripe, which um, this is called tent stripes is a particular name. And on this go round, this is called pandemonium. It's a print fabric with these cute little panda bears in it. I love this. This one I'm gonna sew it to is called lemur me alone. 
it has these really cool lemurs in that print fabric. So Tula Pink has a lot of animals, animals in her prints and her fabrics. And it's one thing I love about it. You know, this one's really cool. It's called Little Stinky. It has skunks in it. Isn't that cool? <laughs> and of course, Read Between the Lines is all about the zebras. Just really fun fabric. Okay. So sew it to this edge first after I'm gonna have to do some piecing on the, the logs so I'll be back and forth to the ironing board this will not require any pinning It's pinning time, woohoo. And what that means is it's closer to sewing time, even a bigger woohoo. Okay. <laughs> ah. So, I find it very important when piecing and all the, it just, if you have, if you're lucky enough to have a, a cabinet where the, your machine, sets into or the tabletop is even with the better your machine if you if you're like me and you don't have that these extension tables are so important to have it just makes the whole process go so much easier like i consider an extension table or a sewing table like a top priority when I get a machine, a new machine, it's got to have one or the other. So let's see here. Next, I am going to add, just did that, so I'm adding black to the white. Next.
almost down to my last round of strips. I've got six more strips to sew onto this and it will be done. 